It is July 1776, and Philadelphia is celebrating. Independency has just been declared. The Continental Army formed and war waged against their oppressors. Despite this fact, there's a lonely man in the room. He knows the war has been waged against the enemy he opposes. However, he knows that his side does not have a game plan. The Congress they had been a part of was unofficial at best, and only survived on the practically voluntary funds and cooperation of the colonies. He had tried his best to ensure a more secure start to the United States than the one that was about to unfold. However, he knew there was nothing he could do now, and left the Congress ashamed and concerned about the future of the newborn nation. That man's name was John Dickinson, one of only three men not to sign the Declaration of Independence. I'm sure we've all been in that situation where you and your friends have been gung-ho about doing something, but you had no plan at all. And that is what John Dickinson saw. And to add insult to injury, he had just proposed a plan for the United States to rely on before they declared independence. John Dickinson's predictions about continuing with the current Congress turned out to be true. Continuing with the Continental Congress ushered it in an era of economic, logistic, and food problems. Realizing their mistakes, the Continental Congress brushed off the plans for John Dickinson's centralized government. However, John Dickinson's idea was not original. In fact, he had borrowed it from Benjamin Franklin, America's first old guy. In 1754, Benjamin Franklin had this funny little idea of uniting the colonies. Franklin studied both ancient Rome and Greece, as well as the local Haudenosaunee tribes who had recently formed confederation. Uh, Franklin penned what would become known as the Plan of Union, or the Albany Plan. This plan consisted of the colonies electing representatives to what would be known as the Grand, Grand Council. This Grand Council would uh, elect their own President General. The main duties of these colonies would be regulating trade and relationships with the local Indian tribes, as well as trade and relationships within the colonies and defense of the colonies at large. Under this plan, the colonies would still be under the rule of Great Britain and the British law would be the highest law of the land. However, any new laws made by the Grand Council would have a three-year period to be approved by the King of Great Britain. Under this plan, the colonies were allowed to govern themselves as much as they saw fit, or at least as much as the King would allow them. This plan, the Plan of Union, or what would become known as the Albany Plan, actually grew quite popular among the people and even spawned the famous Join or Die cartoon. However, when Franklin proposed this plan to the colonial governments, they said no. You may be wondering, but wait, isn't that Benjamin Franklin, the dude from the Revolutionary War? Why does his proposed government have England in it? I thought he was fighting against Great Britain. Well, my friend. Life for wealthy landowners in colonial America wasn't really that bad. I mean, you had civil rights as prescribed by the English Bill of Rights, you had relative protection, and you were had a connection to the biggest trade network in the world at the time. It wasn't until these rights started getting taken away that people like Franklin became more revolutionary. Speaking of which, Fast forward to July 1776, and the Continental Congress has finally been convinced to declare independence against Great Britain after over a year of fighting. Uh, meanwhile, John Dickinson has his own plans for the Articles of Confederation, the new government of the colonies. This Articles of Confederation take inspiration from Benjamin Franklin's, however, John Dickinson updates them with his own new ideas. For instance, the aspect of British law is replaced with a centralized legislature, and civil rights go to all Americans, as well as the foreign policy powers of the colonies are limited.
John Dickinson tried to get the Continental Congress to sign the Articles of Confederation first. However, they refused, and they refused to do it anyway because they said they did not want to submit themselves to another central government. John Dickinson was pretty ashamed. I mean, it was a pretty big bra moment. He resigned from the Continental Congress, and he joined the army to fight in the war. We've all been there. The next few years were basically a living hell. I mean, this new nation that was fighting a war couldn't even afford to pay its army. The military was paid basically out of pocket or on very, very shaky agreements. And anyways, the colonies had no organization between them and could do basically whatever they wanted. The shape of this new country these soldiers were fighting for wasn't very certain. And so, about a year later, the Continental Congress set a deadline for themselves. Draft a proper Articles of Confederation. Ah! 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 You were using a script the whole time!